work on the first try. So how many people who are familiar with Teradigi so far? Awesome, thank you. Appreciate you being customers. Hopefully you're gonna see some exciting new things that we're doing as well. For those of you who don't know Teradici, it may be because you're using us, but you're not aware of that. If you're doing remote uh, editing today, if you're doing remote collaboration today, and you're using some of our partner um, solutions through HP, through Dell, through uh, other partnerships for zero client or thin clients, that's uh, an example of where you're also experiencing uh, Teradici. Uh, we've been one of the leaders in uh, PCOIP, uh, remote uh, desktop protocols enabling workloads like Avid uh, Media Composer. And uh, we also just uh, recently announced uh, uh, PCOIP Ultra, uh, expansions on the capabilities of uh, our technology. We'll go into a little bit more of that later. Our footprint, you guys represent a lot of that. Over 13 million users worldwide uh, currently use Teradici and PCOIP uh, in uh, their day-to-day -day work in remote uh, access, uh, remote workload management. And our partnerships, mentioned some of that today as well. And who's using us? Media and entertainment, uh, as well as in financial services, uh, in uh, manufacturing, education, healthcare are examples of uh, where uh, you'll find uh, Teradici, where you'll find uh, customers who are using our technology. So you heard a little bit of, you know, kind of a how. How are we enabling the environment? Some of uh, um, the approach is also why. What's our focus? Um, what do we bring to the table uh, for the users that experience us today? Uh, and for some of the partnerships and things you hear a little bit more about with uh, Avid and our partnership also with Azure. First, high performance. Latency is a key issue that we address. Security are um, factors that we address. Enabling your user experience to be just as if it was a robust workstation. Those are all the features that we bring in why and how we provide that desktop access, that remote access to uh, key workloads. That a lot of it is in our fidelity, our focus on the experience in uh, high resolution, uh, high uh, um, uh, uh, content quality. As I simplify it as, we represent lines cut and clarity. But the idea is uh, the uh, content you want to see is exactly what you're working on. The colors are exactly what you expect to see, whether it was in a remote access capability or in a um, robust workstation. And then flexibility. That in addition to our Azure partnership, we work with other cloud partners as well. That we enable on-premise capabilities from traditional architecture to private cloud types of architectures distributed partnerships. So as John mentioned, some of the scalability needs, the ability to take advantage of your extended partnerships as well, bring different teams together, and to be able to collaborate on uh, uh, core centralized sources with everybody having the same experience. It's a lot of, of, of our approach to the architecture in making sure that everybody's getting the same experience that Avid intended in the case with Media Composer. So I talked about some of the examples. The product that uh, um, specifically you hear more and more about, if you're not already familiar, is Teranichi Cloud Access Software. So this is really just an extrapolation from what we've traditionally provided and continue to provide in our partnerships in zero client and thin clients as a software-based orchestration and deployment tool for Teranichi and PCOIP in a cloud infrastructure. That cloud infrastructure in this case can be on Azure, on other cloud partners, or and, actually, uh, within a traditional infrastructure or your private cloud. It enables us also to collaborate across different systems, different platforms. So if you have some of your users are dedicated to their Mac devices, others love their Dell devices, others are hooked on their iPads, others are very focused on using uh, Android-based tablets, all of that is enabled in our technology, that the experience is delivered in those different platforms. So as a power user as well, if you are looking at tablets for some activities and maybe spot checking, spot activities, gives you uh, that uh, highly flexible uh, access. And then you go back to uh, your large 4K unit or things like that for the robust uh, um, uh, media work that you want to do. You've got that kind of flexibility. If you're in IT, if you're a studio management 
uh, you're uh, looking at security uh, controls, all of that stays in a central spot. We're uh, providing the access remotely but the, for the user experience, but the technology, the data uh, source especially, stays in the data center, stays in the cloud. So all we're sharing are pixel uh, transfers, uh, we're not doing data transfers. So it enables a lot of collaboration, but also a lot of security. The architecture, for folks who are in uh, IT operation, very high level. The, happy to uh, meet with folks later to go deeper into uh, the design architectures. But you'll see that we enable uh, with our um, single source cloud access software, across an on-premise architecture for both Windows and Linux deployments, uh, dedicated workstation <coughs> base, or uh, with a hypervisor-based architecture. And if you're running environments where you're doing dedicated resources as well as hypervisor or virtualization-based resources, as you'll see here, I can create that mixed architecture. If I'm also going to take advantage of part of my work stream in the cloud, as you'll see here, I can take advantage of that um, infrastructure. So for the back-end operations, I can take advantage of the resources I need at the scalability that I need. For my end user, their experience stays the same. That their client access stays their client access. So you have the ability to take advantage of where those workloads reside based on the user role that you've assigned, or subset teams that you're working with, or just sub-teams that you have running. That in some organizations, it's not uncommon to have 10, 20, 30, 40 different uh, um, team groups working, lots of different data to uh, um, collaborate on, bring together on. This gives the ability to compartmentalize and you help know, from other partners uh, um, later, how to also bring it all back together. And then I mentioned PCOIP Ultra. Big announcement from us just a couple days ago. Uh, highlighting it here at the event, a lot that we can go into, a lot of technology updates, the big uh, key uh, benefits for customers, expanding beyond our current base for pixel rates. Depth of color, depth of saturation, depth of what you need and what you're working on. 4x over our already industry leading capabilities. Also expanding our performance and uh, scalability uh, in uh, um, our support. We're seeing 4K and UHD adoption grow. You may already be there. You may already be at the point of uh, um, needing uh, up to four systems running at once. We're expanding our capabilities to meet those demands, and if you're not there, to be ready for you. I'd like to take a little moment now here. This is late breaking. We weren't sure if we were going to do this. <laughs> but as you heard in uh, the reveal earlier today, now, I didn't get to put anything under your chairs. <laughs> but you may have heard Dana say that we have available a Media Composer Azure test drive. And we do. So for a limited time, Anyone can request an evaluation license of Media Composer for 30 days to deploy in their Azure subscription and try editing in the cloud. And you can try it today. <laughs> so I'm going to turn it over to Richard, who couldn't be happier now, to show you remote editing in the cloud for real. Yes. So, so it's been it's been really fun for me to go around and uh, and demonstrate this. My first, my early demos of remote editing were were better than a year ago, and uh, and last summer I remember spending some time setting up in a in a workstation uh, in New York City with a group of editors. Had about five editors there, and uh, and showed them that they showed them editing from the cloud. They were actually sitting at their media composer, having a multi-screen cloud editing experience. And we gave them each. 20 to 30 minutes uh, to edit from the cloud. And, uh, and, and all of them said, so it took me an hour and a half to get here into the city today, and, uh, and it's gonna take me an hour and a half to get home. You mean I could be having this editing experience from home today? And, and we said, yes. And they said, okay, how, how soon can we start? How soon can we start? So I had a bunch of slides showing different architectures and things like that of the experience. This is actually the experience that you will have. Um, I'm connected on my laptop here over wireless, not some big fancy connection, uh, running a media composer. This media composer is running in uh, East US 2, 
which is in uh, the state of Washington, so almost a thousand miles away. Um, having a great editing experience here. Um, and as you can see, I've set it up for multicam. I'm not just dragging a single image, I'm dragging four images at a time, simultaneously. Uh, so, and this is the experience that you can be having with the uh, cloud test drive. So we really encourage you to, uh, to, to, to sign up, light it up, and, uh, and get in and play with it.